Good morning, guys. Um, this message this morning is real imperative. They all are, but it's about the sin within. Okay, guys, there's a reason why I titled this. I had a dream, and then the next day, the Lord gave me the scriptures, and it was a couple days ago, and I just I haven't had a chance to put it on. Um because I've kind of been burning the candle at both ends, seemingly, but some things are starting to transpire and take place. And long story. But anyhow, so <clears throat> I am going to get better at this, the delivery piece of it. But these were the scriptures the Lord gave me to go with. Time to drain, drain the swamp, the sin within, and where we're at today, guys. As a, as a church, as a body nation as a world the scriptures he gave me were Psalms 12 and he highlighted uh, 3 through 8 I'm sorry yeah 3 through 8 and then but really the whole thing and then Proverbs 2 the whole thing all the way down to 18 but really the whole thing but he also told me to, that it all correlates into the Matthew 20 21 and 22 message guys it's time to repent weep between the porch and the altar and get this right with God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost in his word, and turn, okay, back to him. Turn, open your Bibles. Turn to him at 5 a.m. prayer, because that's what he told me to, to really kind of be a theme, to get this nation in the world, actually, but to get up and pray and start the day at 5 a.m. Because we're going to win this battle. Not with our theology. Not with our church buildings or ministries. Or any of that. But with direction from him in prayer. It's just time, guys, to change and to turn. We think that we're a godly Christian nation because we slapped a label on our dollar bill. It says, in God we trust. That's just another idol, guys. The dollar bill is an idol. That's what everybody's talking about now. Where's our trust in him? That manna from heaven's going to come, guys, but not not through the almighty dollar it's just another idol the politics are another idol there's so many idols guys I put them out there and that's what we need to turn from the go to the mat the those pieces that i just the, the psalms 12 and the proverbs too maybe even a little brutal honestly But the harvest is ready, guys. That's in Matthew 20. And he wants us to harvest, to be laborers in the field. And guess what? The pay is the same, whether you're the homeless guy in the front of the church, doorkeeper, or the senior pastor that has a million people. Same. I'll correlate that into this. Okay, some vessels for honor, some for dishonor. God created us in his image for his glory. Okay, so it's all hands on deck right now. All we're, He wants us to be those vessels. That outpouring, that new wine is going to be poured out. But are we going to be the vessels that are going to hold it? Or are we going to be the vessels that are going to burst? Because we're in our old ways. And our sinful 
old fleshly nature? Are we going to turn and be those vessels? Well, let's break this down in the vessel piece, guys. This is natural, sort of, but not really. Just breaking it down so it's a little more simpler. It's like a gas can, a milk jug, and a plastic storage bin. You know, those totes. Okay. I'm not going to store milk in my storage container in my garage. I'm not going to pour it in my gas can. I'm not going to pour gas in my milk jug. It tastes pretty, pretty yucky. I'm not going to pour milk in my lawnmower. But I need all of them, guys. I like my grass cut. I like to drink milk. And I need some, a place to store some of my junk. They're all necessary, but they all have different purposes and functions. They even look different, you know? And so that's the body of Christ. They can be a stay-at-home mom and in the perfect will of God. You, you, you know, I don't know why anybody wants to want to be a pastor, because when you read the job description, take up your cross and follow me, and there's just a lot to it. I gotta get out of the surrealness of it, guys. The harvest is ready, but the labors are few. <coughs> Excuse me. That's Matthew 20, 21. The stone the builders rejected. Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. This is where I'm at with this, in this part of it. Farther, a little farther on down. We have to fall on the word. Or the word's gonna fall on us. Read it, guys. You don't like that page in the Bible, just rip it out. You'll have a holy Bible, all right, it'll be so full of holes, nobody will even recognize that it's the word of God. It's in its entirety. I don't know at all, not even close. I'm just being obedient as his vessel. So we have to let the word fall on us. Not, I mean, let the, we have to fall on the word. God, Jesus, Holy Ghost, what do you, one of my most favorite things to do now is, Jesus, what would you do? That's where we need to be at, guys. And that's why the 5 a.m. prayer is so important. It could be 12, you know, I, I don't know what your prayer hours are, but if we get together because there's strength in the gathering, let's do it, guys. third one is the marriage supper of the lamb the wedding's be pre prepared he called everybody and they had stuff to do that's my paraphrasing it but you'll get the just read it you know what i'm talking about look what happened they sent their servants they treated him bad look what happened to the people that he called that's when he went out on the highways and hedges and compelled his people to come in as the people he called weren't listening, took it lightly. Can't take this lightly, guys. Look around, okay? It's right in our face. Man, would you have thought two months ago that there were so many dictators in this country? from judges, lawyers, you know, judges, mayors, governors, even all the way up to the presidency, guys. I know what you're gonna think, I'm a Trump hater and I'm not, pray for our leaders, of course. But Ephesians 3, 4, 5, and 6, or Proverbs, I'm sorry. Do we really trust Where's our trust? 
Just trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways, and He'll direct our paths. That's where I'm at with this, guys. Instead, we're trusting in the government. The same people that told us to lock down, stay at home, are the same ones throwing a little bit of a check out there. Even the word stimulus kind of sounds fleshly to me, stimulating or whatever. It's fake money, guys, for one. It's debt. It's a trap to get us to turn to cash to the mark of the beast. Look how easy it ushered in, guys. Look what the world did. Capitulated 90% of it, 95% of it. Shut down, stopped, quit. Over a flu. Sorry. And I'm not mocking or diminishing because one, one couple... He happened to be a firefighter, but lost their child. And he, that is not good, guys. That is very painful. That child's life. But guys, the sin within. Look how many, honestly, look how many babies we, we abort and let be murdered. Look how our sexual deviation is. Everything goes. Fornication, LGBT, is whatever. Pornography. Alcoholism is rampant. Everybody's like wine. Well, I'm from up north, but a lot of the stuff up there, you say wine and spirits. Something there. Of course, the elite, and they all got this plan, and they, you know, they make money off of of people's misery. Look at the disparity <clears throat> between the rich. Pick one, Amazon, Walmart, any of them. Why can you go shop there? And some lady in Dallas can't even open her barber shop to feed her family. Not a barber shop, a salon, I'm sorry. Some guy in Florida, I think he was a comic book dealer or something, and those lines. Do we really trust these people? We're going to end up like Venezuela, guys, if we don't get on our knees and humble ourselves and pray, turn from our wicked ways. I'm sorry. I'm not the doom and gloom guy because there's good news in the gospel because His grace is sufficient, His blood. That's the whole beauty of the cross of God's plan. We just deviated from it and try to go our own way and do our own thing and create. So he told me, I'm going to end with this. He said, why are we trying to create a house, a church, a ministry, flesh? When I, when, well, he said, when I've already created one to dwell in what should be me and you, so much better. This presence stuff you know we try to create this surreal atmosphere i'm not saying don't gather that's not what i'm saying be careful who you gather with five wise five foolish some people got to, got to the door they said they said didn't we cast off devils heal the sick raise the dead do all these wonderful things in your name depart from me for i never knew you do we really know them? It's for all, guys. And that's the good news. His grace and mercy is still there. If it wasn't for his grace and mercy, because this, this message I put out, it's over two years old, about the economic collapse of the USA. Guys, we've already been collapsed years ago. 22 trillion, whatever, pick, pick a number, whatever it is. In debt, they never took... Go to shut the government down. I haven't talked about that lately, but now it's building more paper money, fake money that we don't have. That's two years old. If it wasn't for the grace of God, guys, we would already be a Venezuela, a third world country. Seriously. It's time to get on our knees, get out of this theology. Get past all the doctrinal differences, even. I'm 
not saying include every religion because that's a that's an ungodly, unholy thing too. There isn't but one way to the Father. But the beauty of the cross, God's plan, we can't deviate from it, guys. It's time to get back. <coughs> what the enemy is trying to steal from us. It's not just our civil liberties. It's our, it's our, it's our liberty in the Lord. So are we just going to just sit and be silent? This, I'm going to end with this. because it, it was six months ago, a year ago, and I'm only doing this because to add the credibility to this. But you too, you're going to get things that you never got if when you go to your prayer closet. And when we pray together, because if I stick my head out my door, 3108, my address, and you stick your head out, wherever two or more gather together in my name. So when we all gather together, there's going to be a lot of power in that. Eight, maybe even eight months ago, I'm in prayer early in the morning. It's out there. It's called, that's became a message. Isaiah 60 and 22 too. Arise and shine. He said, look up the words to the song, Sound of Silence. An old rock and roll song, guys, from the 60s. 1963, I think. You know, of course I remember that. It's more, you know, it was kind of in my era, the 60s and 70s, you know. I remember that song, but I didn't know the words. It's a rock and roll song, guys, but it's almost prophetic. The very first part's Hello Darkness, my old friend, I've come to talk to you again. Farther on down, it talks about a neon sign. And it's kind of like the world, you know, the selfies and the flashing and the internet and the... My wife gets on me for raising my hands and all that stuff. The sensationalism that the church has become. And then at the end, it's the words of the prophets were written on a subway wall. Why were they underground? No more time to be silent, guys. Look where it's got us. Millions of babies aborted. Death toll's pretty high. The LBGT issue. All the different religions. Some of them can stay open, but the church can't. What? Is there really any truth to that? Probably. The craziness, the dictatorship, the lockdown, the... Why? Because of the sin within, guys. It's time to repent as a people, as a nation, as a world. Are we? That's what I'm telling you guys. <clears throat> That's what's going to change this equation. Not our government, not our stimulus package, not our voting. I'm not saying don't vote either. None of that. That's important, of course. The real importance is getting a hold of him, Jesus, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word. And you're not going to get it from a building you go to, from another ministry, from a preacher on YouTube, me. You're going to get it from him. That's the beauty. That's the good news of the gospel. That's the come boldly before the throne of grace, glory, and mercy. It's the whole plan. God's whole plan was to reconnect, be our friend, walk with us in a cool a day, talk to us. But we got to listen. And you're not going to get it with all this noise and distraction. And every corner you turn on, somebody's talking about the coronavirus. Why are people vexed? Why do people say, I don't really care anymore? I'm going to end with this. That was one of my, I put this out on Twitter and other places. It's like people ask you, are you really, you know, 
paying attention to this coronavirus. I'm like, no, are you really paying attention to God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word? Because if you don't get it, we're going to perish from something, guys. We all do. But the real issue, that's what's going on in the world. The fear and the unbelief is because they know they're going to perish without Jesus. And the church is all worried about their stuff and their idol. <clears throat> Just as fearful. It's time to get right with God. Repent. Come clean. That's all he wants. I am going to end with this. Put this out there. It's good. He didn't want our wealth and fame, but our guilt and shame. He wants those dirty, ugly, sinful spots in our lives. Why? I asked him that too. I was like, I kind of, I knew why, sort of, but because he wants to break the chains that the enemy has had a hold of us. The places in our hearts where we won't even go. We got them locked up, sealed up with 18 locks and filled up with concrete. I'm not talking about inner perspective, all this other garbage that the world's portrayed it as. I'm talking about ringing before him, letting him enter in to the sin within. It's time to purge ourselves, guys, and cleanse ourselves. So we love you. Um, I'm going to end with that uh, because there is a storm coming, guys. This coronavirus is just a prelude to and it's going to be a time to fall on the word or let the word fall on us. Matthew 20, 21, 22. Don't take it lightly, guys. I love you. Um, talk to you soon. Um, and my videos are going to get better. I've got some things in the works. I know they're kind of lame right now. And I apologize for that. Um, soon, real soon. Some things have transpired. Just all this corona mess has hit me pretty hard, too. And the things that I thought I had planned went a little bit different direction. But they're starting to come to fruition now. So hang with me um, with my ugly mug and my Dollar Tree reading glasses. Love you guys, though. Um, and Jesus, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word, I'll love you, too. So... Let's be those vessels for honor, not dishonor. Let's clean up this sin from within. Love you guys. Me too, okay? I'm probably, you know, preaching to the choir. I need to be at the forefront of this too. I need to practice what I preach. I'm not immune to any of this. It has nothing to do with me. Love you guys.